Introducing Canon GS. In this section we're going to be developing this game. It's adapted from this GitHub repo. The original code was written six years ago and basically I've just brought it up to date to use the latest versions of the 3GS library and the Canon JS library. I've also changed the code to use modules and classes that were not available six years ago and switch the assets to use a GLB file, not a JSON file. Just modernised it. The movement of the balls uses the physics engine Canon JS. A physics engine uses mathematics and formulas to calculate the forces on an object and uses this information to position and rotate them. A physics engine can be very useful for many games. The first thing to understand about a physics engine is it's not a rendering engine. In order to see the effect of the myriad of calculations, you need to be able to display the various objects that the engine is handling, and that's where 3GS comes in. 3GS works well with Canon JS. Canon JS was developed by Stepp, Stefan Hedman. If you go to the GitHub repo, you'll see it hasn't had a new commit in six years. Stefan's busy doing other things. Thankfully, a new fork of the library is now being maintained by Pomandris, PMNDRS, an open source developer collective. The library has the name Canon ES. I'm assuming the ES refers to ECMAScript, the official name of JavaScript. You've probably heard of ES6, which is the version supported in nearly all browsers. So now we have a modules version of the Canon JS library. Pomandris are the people who also developed React 3 Fiber, a React renderer for 3GS. You don't need to download the library, it's provided as part of the resources. Before we attempt to recreate it, take a look at lecture 7 underscore 1 complete using the default index page of the course resources. Roughly three times a second a new red ball drops and if it hits an existing ball it realistically moves it out of the way. If you had to code this motion by hand it would be challenging to say the least. You'll be surprised just how little code is involved in this example. Now open game.js from the start lecture 7 underscore 1 folder. Notice that the entire Canon JS library is added as an import. Just as we can access all the classes of the 3GS library using capital 3, we can access all the classes of the Canon JS library using capital Canon. There's also a Canon helper class, a little class I created, adapted from the Canon JS demo scripts. Its purpose is to create a visual version of a Canon object, so we can actually see what all the physics calculations are achieving. More about that in a minute. But always remember that Canon JS does not have the equivalent of a 3GS WebGL renderer. Nothing in the library will show a visualization of the current Canon state. In the constructor we call three class methods init3, initworld, and initscene. Init3 is where we initialize 3GS. It's a standard boilerplate method creating the usual scene, camera, and renderer. It adds a light that casts a shadow, starts a rendering loop, and adds a resize event. We've seen it all before, so we won't dwell on it. Init world is where we initialize the Canon equivalent of a 3GS scene, a world. The most important thing to set in a world is the force of gravity. This is a Canon VEC3, virtually an identical class to a 3GS Vector3. It has a set method that takes three parameters. We want gravity to be acting down the y-axis, so we set it to 0, minus 10, 0. The force of gravity acts downwards at 9.82 meters per second squared, but minus 10 is close enough. Then we create an instance of the Canon Helper class. The constructor takes two parameters, a 3GS scene and a Canon world. That's it for this simple method. The most complicated method is init scene. This is where we add content to the Canon world 
and create visual versions of this content that 3GS can render. The fundamental element of a canon world is a body. In 3D physics jargon, this is actually a rigid body because the shapes we add to a body never crumple or change shape. When we create a body, we pass an options object. For the body that will define the ground, we set its mass to zero. This has a special meaning. It means the body is static. It won't move when hit by other objects, but it will act to constrain the motion of other bodies. Having defined a body, we need to add one or more shapes to it. For the ground, the shape we add is a plane, a 2D shape in the X and Y axes. But the ground should be in the X and Z axes if Y is up. Good point, and we'll come to that in a minute. First we need to add this shape to the ground body. Now, just like an object 3D in 3GS, a canon body has a position and quaternion. Hopefully by now you know that the quaternion defines the orientation of the body. We need to rotate the body in the x-axis, which we can do using the set from Euler method. Recall that an Euler is another way of describing a rotation. Here we twist it by minus pi divided by 2, so it leans back. Always remember there are two pi radians in a full revolution, so pi divided by 2 is the same as 90 degrees. Now the plane is in the xz plane, as required. We now have a body correctly positioned and orientated. We add it to the world, just like we'd add a mesh to a 3GS scene. But if we left it there, there would be nothing to actually see. That's where the helper instance comes in. We call the add visual method passing the ground body. The helper class examines the canon body and constructs a 3GS mesh equivalent. Nice! But even if we left it there, you'd be underwhelmed. All you'd see would be a black screen. You need to add code to the render method. We need to get the canon world to move on in time. We use the world method step, which takes a time parameter, 0 0.0167. It's just 1 divided by 60 the equivalent of 60 frames per second. Best to stick to a fixed duration rather than use a clock instance delta time, as this can vary too much frame to frame and confuse the physics solver. We also need to call the update method of the helper. This will move all the 3GS visual copies of the Canon bodies to match their position and orientation. If you save and view lecture 7 underscore 1 start, you'll still be unimpressed. All we have is a grey ground plane. Big deal. The real magic happens when we start adding bodies that can move. In the init scene method we add a couple of variables. Size is set to 0.4 and bodies to an empty array. Now we create an interval function. First we create a new body. It has a mass of 1 kilogram and its initial position is set to a random value between minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 for its x position, y is set to 4 meters up, and the z value, like the x, is a random value between minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. As well as planes, Canon GS supports several other shapes, and one is a sphere. Here we only need its radius, the size value. We're not concerned with how many polygons to make it up from, because it's a perfect sphere. Every point on its surface will be radius distance from its centre. Just like when we created the ground, we add this shape to the body and add the body to the world. Again like the ground, we now need a visual version and use the helper class. This time we add a second parameter, the colour to use. We add this body to the body's array we don't want too many bodies, so we check if the bodies array has more than 80 bodies in it. If so, we want to remove the first body in the array. We use shift, which returns the first element in the array, and also removes this element from the array. The helper class also has remove visual 
as well as add visual. Remove visual removes the mesh from the 3GS scene and deletes it. The Canon world has remove body, which works similarly. If you save and refresh the app, you see an endless stream of balls falling from the sky. Try replacing the random positioning with zero for X and Z to see why we made each ball have a slight difference in positioning from the previous ball. They land so perfectly on top of each other, it looks impossible. What have you learnt? 1. A Canon app needs a world creating. 2. The world needs a gravity value setting. 3. To populate the world we use Canon bodies. 4. A body needs one or more shapes adding. 5. To visualise the Canon world we use a Canon helper. 6. For each body added to the world call helper add visual. 7. In the render method call the world step method and helper update. In the next video we'll think how the ball should move for a pool game. Catch you in a minute. This video comes from my Udemy course, The Beginner's Guide to 3D Web Game Development with 3GS. Get the full course by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.